Hello again, everyone. I found an old folder of photos, and these are like all the 187 scale cars that I collected oh, 15 to 20 years ago. I don't really collect them anymore, and I regret selling these, but uh, I moved places, so I just couldn't lug these things around with me. But I will recommend this scale to you if you guys are into making miniature dioramas. You can obviously fit a lot more cars in a smaller scale and also because this 187 is HO railroading scale so you can you know make complete universes and other hobby train stuff so let's see here this is a brand called Bush and uh, I think that's a Mercedes SSK or an SSKL I still have this one it's a Herpa uh, Brabus SL it's pretty nice uh, look at this thing a Maybach 57 doesn't say the brand but I'm pretty sure it's Herpa Bub is a brand, and these are actually die casts. So that's a tiny car of an Isetta right there. That's yeah, one of those land speed uh, record cars. I don't know if it's an Auto Union or an Audi or what. NSU, I forget. Anyways, it was a cool looking one. This is a Chrysler Airflow Imperial 8. It doesn't say the brand on here, but if I had to guess, it would be Rico. Uh, Bush, uh, it's another brand that makes uh, decent uh, European castings. These look like Alphas and Mercedes. Uh, in Los well, Angeles, well, in Pasadena, California, there's a train store called the Original Whistle Stop. I don't know if it's still around now, but I don't see why it wouldn't be. It looked pretty old when I was there. So they, I bought a few cars from those guys. So here you go. Uh, that's 959 to remember. The engine opening feature was actually so good that I went and bought it again. And I have a video review of that one if you want to check my history. All right. I would like to see a nice premium 928 come out one day in 164 scale. F50, that Testarossa, that little X19, I think it was. Yeah, those are all hair clips. Here's a brand I totally forgot called Magic. Now with the Porsche 914, a couple of other 911s, and then you guys are going to have to help me out here. I don't know what that car is on the upper right. Is that like a Ford Capri, maybe? And then what's below it, a Volkswagen Scirocco or something? I don't know. I think there's a Corrado, a Volkswagen Corrado on the lower left. Viking is another good brand. They obviously seem to do a lot of uh, American cars. And Bush, oh, I'm sorry, Bush and Viking. Okay. Uh, back to Herpa, a little bit of Bush. There's that nice five BMW there on the lower left. Oh, the M1, I forgot about that one. Oh, these are nice. These are, those that Herpa Audi A8. And I guess Bush made one as well. Okay, we got some smart cars here. That smart roadster on the upper right was really cool. Look at the interior, you know, the multiple colors and stuff. So this is why I complain a lot in 164 scale. You know, how is it these 187s can have such colorful interiors and so many modern brands are so cheap with these black plastic interiors in 164 that is. Okay, look at that, the big pink Cadillac. So you can tell this; these are all to scale, you know, because that pink Cadillac is a huge car. Same with that Cadillac Hearst limousine there. I'm not even sure what that upper right one, I think that's a Pope Mobile. Yeah, if I had to guess, that's a Pope Mobile. Okay, some uh, trucks. I think there's a Dodge Power Wagon on the lower left, correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe it's a Land Cruiser in the upper right. Definitely the upper left. All right. Uh, yeah, some British cars here. Maybe that's a Austin Haley, Austin Haley on the left. Maybe a, a Sprite or a Spitfire on the right. A Morgan on the lower right. And an MGA, I think, on the bottom left. So these prices are from like 15 years ago. I'm not sure if they, there's been inflation in this uh, scale. Because it seems like on eBay, you can still buy models like this for this kind of money. Okay, some American cars there, even with the flamed Mercury, is it? No, that's a Cadillac, that sky blue one, never mind. Okay, the Unimogs are awesome. You know, I know the Unimogs exist at 164 scale, but again, they're too big. 
Uh, I don't want to collect trucks. But the 187, it's really cool. Yeah, so Burkina, they made all these Porsches. They got that Wiking uh, 550 Speedster. And then, yeah, you can even collect boats in 187. It doesn't take up much room. <laughs> Interesting, yeah, Motor Max, Fresh Cherries. That's a Ford Escort. Oh, I remember that. It's like an 86 Escort or something like that. Because uh, my friend in high school had one. Even motorcycles and lawnmowers and stuff. Citroen. Okay. An old beat up Mercedes station wagon. And then a Pullman limousine. I totally forgot about that car. Star Mata. I don't even remember that brand at all. All right. I did. I think I did keep this model. I think this is made by Herpa. And then these are the cream of the crop, the Spark models and the Redline models. They're all the same company, like Spark models, or but uh, Redline is specifically Ferraris. So I kept uh, maybe a dozen of these, but I sold all the rest off, which I really regret because they don't even come up for sale, uh, sale on eBay. Now uh, this is at Car Museum. Uh, I have a totally different video on this. Just look up 187 Car Museum. This is an old brand that expired when I was collecting these a long time ago. Made in Italy, they're resin models, and they have photo etched wheels and grills and stuff. So a lot of detail on something so small. I only kept one of them. I sold this one off too. I think this is Mini Champs, Paul models, Paul's model art. I did keep these three. And then, yeah, let me zoom in on this one. So it's a real shame, but right here, the GT40s that won Le Mans, I sold those. I should have never sold those. Those never come up for sale. So, yeah, a lot of other nice ones in here as well. But, uh, yeah, so if you ever think you're going to sell your collection off, think about it twice because <laughs> you might never get them back unless you spend, like, triple or quadruple the amount. Okay, let's back out and move on. All right, Bob, these are all die casts. There's the Datsun rally winner there, car transporter. I don't know what that is. I don't know. Oh, yeah, the 635 CSL, I think, that Beamer. Some sort of wind directed car there. Or speed racer from the early days. 187 uh, Mercedes Benz semi truck race cars. These are by New Ray, I think. So those weren't that expensive. I bet you could still pick those up pretty cheap because New Ray is a cheap uh, brand, but those are they were okay, I remember. Oh, these are a few 143rd scales and apparently some Margarita mix. I just had a whole bunch of the lesser ones. I don't know why they're just in a box, but there's a Pininfarina Mythos right here. And it looks like a video at Grand National with a monogram. All right, what else? Yeah, you can collect large military vehicles. So Roco Mini Tanks. This was now absorbed by the brand Herpa. Herpa bought out this stuff, so you can get military 187s through Herpa now. They have a pretty extensive website. Yeah, this was diecast. And yeah, I guess this is expensive, even way back then. I mean, wow. I'm surprised I bought that. Look at this, a classic transporter. This is probably a, this is a 143rd, I think. Yeah, those Jolinis again. They were so cool. Yeah, apparently that's why I took photos. DTM cars, so these are all Herpa branded DTM cars. And then these are all Ricos, and they had some interesting stuff too. Look at this Alpha. And then I did keep this, the Cadillac 16, such a crazy concept car. But they had the Lambo. Uh, I wish I kept this. I wish there was a premium format 300C, the first generation, the one that looks like a Bentley ripoff. I, I still like it. Oh, yeah, Ford RS200 and 187. I should have never gotten rid of that or this, so that's a shame. 
All right, some more of those bumps, I guess. A couple other DTMs here. Oh, and the Exolero. That was a crazy concept car. I think Jay-Z bought this car, right? And then here's a Dakar rally truck. Uh, more modern SL. I don't know, that's an Alpha. I think we saw that earlier, a Countach. Yeah, Matra Simca. Such random cars as Spark made in 187 scale. Uh, this must be 143rd. It says 143rd, but look at this. It's that Lotus 119C concept from 2004. It's a small little vehicle. All right, look at these. So it would be nice if, you know, we saw more stuff like this in 164, those classic cars. Yeah, these are some of the cheaper ones, I guess, but you can still fit people in them because model railroading again. Yeah, some other ones there. I think this is a Pinsgauer. Yeah, and that's that might be a loose or open uh, Spark model. Yeah, very cool. Hmm. Celica, March. Oh, these are cheap toys. They're like Gashapon toys, so they look pretty low grade, but well, and then uh, I think these are Ricos again. So interesting. A Wanderer. Never even heard of that. I think that's German. It was from 1936. 1934. Interesting. A Cadillac V16. It's pretty cool looking. Some Maseratis. And I guess that's the end of the collection there. So, you know, hopefully I'm not opening up a can of worms for you guys. But if you're running low on space or if you haven't never even collected miniature vehicles, you might want to consider the scales, you know. Uh, uh, the race cars here probably have decals, so they might crack. But the other ones, like these, they don't have decals. So they're not made of metals, most of them. They're mostly plastic. So I'm sure they look just as good today as they did 15, 20 years ago. Because model railroading is meant to last a long time, I think. So keep that in mind. Whereas most die-cast vehicles, they always seem to get paint rash. I don't know of many that last long other than Hot Wheels, which I think might be powder-coated. That's what I'm trying to think nowadays. All right, guys. Well, I'll uh, try to dig up some other photo books and show you those in the future. Thanks. Bye.